Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolo Tech. And this past week, just like always, there's a bunch of information or a bunch of news that came out on different things. Everything from the iPhone 12 event to the Mac Mini prototype that I have some more exclusive information on, as well as the possibility of an iPhone 12 with a ProMotion display. So hopefully we see something like that. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And then also the iOS 14 beta six release date. So I'll talk about that and more in just a moment, but let's start off with Apple just became the world's first $2 trillion company last week. That's their stock valuation. And I'm no expert in any of that, but they are now a $2 trillion company that will probably go up and down like it always does, but that's pretty incredible. Now, the next thing is it was kind of interesting because over this past week, Apple accidentally scheduled an event on September 10th. So on September 10th, maybe we'll see an event, although this seems kind of early for what we were expecting a few weeks later with the iPhone 12. So Apple was supposedly going to delay that a little bit and maybe we'll have an event earlier. Now, last week I talked about some saying that we'll have an event specifically for the Apple watch and maybe a new iPad, but maybe we'll have an event like that and a later event for the iPhones, or maybe we'll just have them all together, but they did schedule an iPhone or some sort of event on the 10th on YouTube accidentally and then pulled it back. So it's hard to say what they'll do, but I would expect something around that time at this point. Now, as far as the iPhone 12 goes, Ming-Chi Kuo has said that Apple is trying to reduce its cost of internal components due to the cost of 5G. They're trying to offset that cost. Now, to in integrate or implement 5G using millimeter wave or using sub-6 costs anywhere from $75 to $135 per phone. So this would bump the cost of the phone up just because it has to use Qualcomm modems and the cost of that and integrating or implementing that is quite expensive. So in order to do that, they wanted to bring the cost down on maybe some of the boards with inside, make it simpler, make it less expensive to manufacture. And that seems to make sense from a manufacturing standpoint. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. Now, as far as the display on the next iPhone, well, many want to know, will it have a 120 Hertz display? I do suspect it will have a notch with face ID, just like we would expect. However, I would love to see a ProMotion 120 Hertz display. Some are saying that they could implement it, but it may be a time constraint and supply constraint where they may not be able to get all the components in they needed to make millions of phones. So I've heard from multiple sources and other places that have said, don't expect 120 Hertz phone, but then I've had others say, well, it's still a possibility. So it seems like it's up in the air. John Prosser commented on it recently and also John Prosser said that Apple's still working on a foldable phone, but the hinge would be fabric instead of maybe a, a plastic hinge or what Samsung is doing or even what Microsoft is doing. So instead of having one display that might be kind of fragile, like Samsung's displays, although those are pretty impressive, you may have two displays similar to Microsoft's duo, but they would come so close that it would be more of a seamless experience, but the hinge would be fabric. This was shown in some patents. So maybe we'll see that Apple's always patenting new ideas. So it wouldn't surprise me if we see something like that, probably within a couple of years at this point, Apple would usually wait until everyone else gets it sort of right. And then they come out with what they think is the best way to do it. Now, before I talk about iOS 14 beta six and when to expect that, I want to talk about the Mac mini prototype that was released over this past weekend by dongle book pro on Twitter. And if you haven't seen this, basically it's a Mac mini with an iPod nano dock in the top. And I have some additional information that's exclusive to share with you about this. And so apparently this was a pet project of Tony Fidel's. And if you're not familiar with him, he helped helped invent or kind of work on the first iPod, depending on who you ask and what the story is. But this particular project supposedly was his pet project and was supposed to be ready for WWDC 2005, or at least that's when Steve Jobs wanted it ready. Supposedly the Mac and iPod teams were working together to make this a seamless magical experience. The Mac mini was done, but there were a lot of problems with the iPod nano. And so it would never see the light of day. It got pushed too far back. And because they wanted to release them at the same time and Steve jobs wanted to announce it at the same time, they decided to scrap it all together and you would no longer have the dock. Now this could have been better anyway, just because with a dock in there, as the dock connector changed or moved position, it may have caused problems in the future. But I think the overall idea is interesting, but this apparently was one of the reasons that Tony Fidel 
eventually left Apple. A fallout between this and many other things as well. But he apparently had this project scrapped and wasn't happy about it. Now, if that's true, that makes sense. But again, this is kind of an odd prototype as well. So I thought the whole idea was interesting and thought I'd share that with you. Now, as far as iOS 14 beta six, I would expect it as soon as tomorrow. Now, based off iOS 12 betas and iOS 13 betas, there will be definitely a few more betas, at least a couple more. As far as iOS 13, we had eight betas and then a GM or golden master with iOS 12. We had more betas than that. We actually had 12 betas and then a GM. So as far as this update, there could be a lot more, but as far as a release date, I would think as soon as tomorrow, based on what you can see here on the left, these are all of the dates that Apple released iOS 12 and 13 betas. And we had seven days between beta five and beta six with iOS 12 and nine days between beta five and beta six with iOS 13. So based off that information, I would expect an update between tomorrow and Thursday. Now I would hope to see it as soon as tomorrow. That seems more likely since week to week, it seemed to be on the same days, but they could push it as far as Thursday or they could push it to the following week. Of course, Apple can do anything they want with this, but just based on what we've seen in the past, I would expect it as soon as tomorrow and hopefully we'll see it tomorrow. And of course I'll do a video on it if we have that. Now, another interesting prototype that we still haven't seen is air power. A lot of us really were looking forward to this to have a seamless way to charge not only our iPhone, but our Apple watch at the same time. So you would just set it anywhere on the mat along with your Apple watch or your AirPods. And of course you wouldn't have this band on here. You would just set it on the air power and then it would charge the device. Now, one of the reasons many thought that it was canceled was going to be the overall cost, not only of production, but also to the consumer. So as you can see this particular prototype here from Mr. White, if this is actually it with all of this circuitry and all of these coils, I believe there's 14 of them. And with all of those coils and circuitry, that definitely could be very costly to produce and maybe just be too expensive to justify selling it to the public. Now there were other concerns about heat and things like that, but it could just be cost. We'll probably never know the real reason it was canceled, but the device looks pretty interesting and I really wish I could have gotten my hands on one eventually. Now, apparently iPad air is ready to go and ready to launch at any time. Now there were leaks as early as today saying that the iPad air would even launch today. I haven't seen it yet, but the next generation iPad air, most people are saying it won't launch until March, 2021. So there's anywhere from now till then from when we'll see it. And that sort of was the case with the iMac where we thought it'd come out months ago. And then it finally came out a few weeks ago. And so I would expect an iPad air eventually, but the iPad air is apparently going to have an a 14 CPU. So if it does have that, I would expect Apple to release it at least at the same time as the iPhone with the newer CPUs. And then apparently it will look similar to the iPad pro where they're sort of squaring off all the edges similar to the iPhone 12. So it makes sense sort of to unify the line up what they look like, like they do every so often. And that makes a lot of sense. I would expect it to come out sometime around at least after the iPhone 12 or maybe early next year, early next year makes more sense to me. But again, it, in these times, we just don't know what Apple's going to do. And none of that information is confirmed until Apple says it. Now, another leaker as well said that iPods are still a thing. So I thought that's really interesting. Apparently iPod touches are going to get the same redesign as iPhone 12. Again, this makes sense and they would ship in the second or third quarter of next year. So there must be a big enough market for them still where they'll sell them and have probably similar features to an iPhone 12, but without that cellular radio in them. So that would be really great to see, especially for those that don't really need a phone, but they just want this overall phone experience and not have a phone bill along with it. Now there's a couple more pieces of news. One of them has to do with Fortnite and Epic is still battling Apple and apparently tried to bargain with Apple for a side deal prior to filing the lawsuit. So they were looking for a side deal in getting a better rate. So right now they pay 30%. If there's in-app purchases, they'll pay those to Apple on any of their games. And that's typical of Apple and Google, and they'll charge a fee for that. So because of all that, they're still working on it. And hopefully we'll see that get resolved at some point. It's not a game I personally play, but let me know if you care about it in the comments below. And if you don't, I'll just stop mentioning it, but I think it's pretty significant as the way it may change 
Apple's App Store model, and maybe Google as well, since it was pulled from there. Now, there's some great news as far as your phone, and that's Apple Care. Now, up until this point, you had to buy Apple Care within about a month or so of buying your iPhone. Apple's pushed that back to one year in the United States and Canada. So maybe you buy the next iPhone 11 or the iPhone 12 or whatever phone you want to buy next. You have up to a year to purchase Apple Care Plus on top of that. And that protects your phone not only for another year, but lessens the cost if you damage it. For example, if you get water damage to it, even though it's IP certified, they'll still charge you a deductible of about $100. If you crack your screen, it's far less than that. So it's just an extended warranty and you can buy that up to a year later if you need it. So I think that was really nice of them to do and I'm glad they have that model now. Now, the final bit of news has to do with just a simple icon. And while it's not a huge deal, Apple redesigned the test flight icon and apparently some people are saying there's going to be new icons with iOS 14 beta six. So maybe we'll see some redesigned icons like we have with the music app in the previous couple betas. And maybe we'll see that across the OS, maybe to match Mac OS big Sur or something else, but it would be nice to see a slight refresh on some of these. That's it for this week's news. And as we see more information, of course, I'll update you next week on that as well. Now, as far as iPhone 12, I really hope we get that promotion display. It's so nice to use 120 Hertz display on the iPad Pro, for example, would love to see it on an iPhone. And I would gladly wait a few weeks if it's a supply chain issue to get that on my phone. So if Apple could actually make that happen, I'd really be appreciative of that. But if they can't, it may not be that exciting of a year unless there's something else we don't know about. But let me know if you'd wait in the comments below. If you'd rather have promotion and you'd be willing to wait, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Thank you.